Determine the area of each rectangle. The area of a rectangle is found by multiplying the base by the height. So I'm going to do problem two. It's helpful to change these into improper fractions. The way that I do that is I multiply 5 times 4 and add 1. So that's 21 over 4. And I also need to change 2 and a half. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. And you keep the denominator. We are multiplying the base by the height of those rectangles. 21 times 5 is 105, and 4 times 2 is 8. So this is 105 over 8 inches squared. Complete the remaining two problems in your warm-up. For this next section, we have the area is still the base times the height, but now we have to form it into an equation. The area in this case is 19.6. The base, we don't know, and the height is 8. So right now, the variable is being multiplied by 8, so we undo that by dividing by 8 on both sides. 19.6 divided by 8 is 2.45. So this missing side length here is 2.45 meters. Go ahead and complete the remaining two from this slide. This lesson is a digital lesson, so if it's open, feel free to follow along on your computer. Otherwise, take some notes in your workbook as we go through this. Use the shaded squares and shaded triangles to make a design. What is the total area of your design in square centimeters? So you can see here that each square represents one square centimeter. So I can use multiple. to form a pattern or a design. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten complete squares. If I combine this triangle and this triangle, it makes another square, or 11, and this one is half of a square. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and a half. It wants me to input an integer, so that means I need another half section to turn it into 12. Use the polygon to make an interesting polygon with at least eight sides. Estimate the area of your polygon in square centimeters. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 sides. To estimate the area, I'm going to approximate how many full squares I have in here. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 full squares. And then if I combine pieces together, I can get four to create a full square. So for example, if I combined this piece and this piece together, that would make one, two, three, maybe if I combine those it would make four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So altogether, I have about 38 squares. If I mix up my partial squares with my complete squares, I should have around 38. What is the most specific name for each shape? What are the properties of each shape? In A, this one is called a parallelogram. It has two sets of parallel sides. B is a rectangle, and it has two sets of parallel sides as well. But it also has four right angles and two sets of sides that are the same length. The parallelogram also has two sets of sides that are the same length. Use the shaded squares and shaded triangles to make a parallelogram that is not a rectangle. So creating a parallelogram. And now it says to find the area of the parallelogram in square centimeters. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six whole squares. And then this would make seven, eight, and then these two can combine to make nine. So this is nine square centimeters. Using the shapes, make a rectangle and find its area in square centimeters. Using the same shapes. So I put the six squares from before. One, two, three, four, five, six here. And then I've also taken these three triangles and placed them here. Then I'm going to take these triangles and put them along here, which it won't let me do in the diagram, but I can do just visually. So then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the rectangle.
name the shape. This shape is a parallelogram. Use the cut and slide tool to alter the shape so you can adjust your shape. And then you can cut it and slide it over. So you're just taking the same area and moving it to the other side. And then it says what shape is made after using the cuts and slide tool. This is a rectangle. What similarities and differences do you notice between the two shapes? They both have the same area, the same shaded section, the same amount in there. The difference is, oh, they both have the height also. You can see the height shows up in the same, same type of location. Some differences I notice are the angles. Or how slanted it is. Use the interactive to help you find the area of the parallelogram in square centimeters. So we can adjust here. If I slide that all the way over, you can see the bottom is 14, or you can add 3.8 and 10.2 to get the bottom is 10.2 plus 3.8 is 14 also. And then if we slide it over, The height is 5 and the bottom 12.8 plus 1.2 is still 14. So for a rectangle, we would do base times height. Base is 14. The height is 5. 14 times 5 is 70. So it has an area of 70 centimeters squared or square centimeters. What do you notice about the area of the parallelogram when the parallelogram is cut at different places? So if we adjust, it still has a height of five. And if we add 7.6 and 6.4 together, we would still get the base is 14. So the area of a parallelogram is the base times the height. And for a rectangle, it is also the base times the height. Notice the height and the base form a right angle. We're going to look for this in all of the shapes that we're finding areas of. Use this interactive to find out what happens if the height is not shown completely within the figure. Can you decompose the parallelogram and compose it into a rectangle? So we're going to cut, we're going to move it over, but we still have a piece that's missing here. So if I cut it again and move this to the other side, I can get a rectangle, even if the height is not inside of the shape. Let's look at decomposing parallelograms into many parts. What is true about any parallelogram with the same base and height and the same height? How do you know? So they've broken their parallelogram up into multiple parts and rearranged them to still get the same height. And look at this base here. Watch this base piece, that green part still fills in the whole base of the rectangle. Since the shaded sections are the exact same, I know that they have the same area.
move the vertices of the parallelogram so the parallelogram has an area of 30 square centimeters. So we want the base times the height to equal 30. So if I make my base, be one, two, three, four, five. It needs a height of six. Make a different parallelogram that has an area of 30 square centimeters. So some other things that multiply to make 30 are 15 times two, so I can make it two wide and 15 tall. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 tall. And then you can move it diagonally as much as you want because it still has a base of two and a height of 15. If we try it, we shouldn't have any empty space or any extra. Calculate the area of the parallelogram in square centimeters. So this has a base of one, two, three, four, five, six, because the bottom ends there, and a height of one, two, three, four. Six times four is 24. The base times the height. Calculate the area of the parallelogram in square centimeters. This one has a base of two, it's two wide. This part doesn't count because it's not part of the parallelogram. And a height of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So base times height, two times 10 comes out to 20. Again, we're checking to make sure there's no empty space in our parallelogram and no extra. If we had an incorrect answer, it might look something like too much or too little. Calculate the area of the parallelogram in square centimeters. The base of this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the height is one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, this is not part of the base. So base times height is how we find area. Seven times six is 42. Adesh says that the base of the parallelogram is 12 centimeters and the height of the parallelogram is 7, making the area 84 square centimeters. Do you agree with Adesh? I see that the base is 4. This dotted line is just to help us create the right angle, or the 90 degree angle, for the, for the height. This 8 is not part of the parallelogram, so I disagree. It is not a 12 centimeter base. It has a four centimeter base. The base of the parallelogram is four centimeters. The dotted or dashed line is not a part of the shape. That's the end of lesson one. Remember, it is a digital lesson, so if you weren't able to log on, just write some notes in your workbook.